So let's take a look at each variable individually. So the fractional conversion, and this formula is in your reference handbook, it's represented as capital X sub A. So the fractional conversion for the FE exam is almost always with respect to component A. And it's equal to the initial concentration of A minus the final concentration over the initial concentration. And this, this equation only applies if the volume is constant. So for your exam, you're only going to be dealing with um, the constant volume situation when finding the fractional conversion. Next slide. Epsilon is your fractional change in volume. And it, as I said, it represents the change in volume of a system between no conversion, so the very beginning of a reaction, to complete conversion when the reaction has uh, completely formed reactants. So no conversion, your fractional conversion is 0. Complete conversion, your fractional conversion is 1. So in your reference handbook, you have this formula for epsilon based on volumes the delta V over your initial volume. But for the, your exam, the way you're going to calculate epsilon, uh, more, uh, the more common way to cal calculate epsilon for your exam is to look at the stoichiometric coefficients. So if you have a standard reaction, A plus B forms C plus D, you can find epsilon by uh, subtracting the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the products minus the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants and dividing by the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants. So this epsilon can be found just by looking at a reaction equation. Now epsilon is, is, epsilon is not equal to zero, meaning it's most common when epsilon is not equal to zero when it's a gas phase reaction. So this equation is primarily applied to changes in gas quantity. Solids and liquids are negligible. And they're negligible because solids and liquids are incompressible, and their volume changes are not as significant as the volume changes for gases. Now, a system is said to have constant density and constant volume if epsilon is equal to zero. So if you have a system with solids, just solids, just liquids, or if they tell you they are constant density gases, then your epsilon is going to be equal to zero. Now, for your exam, you need to know that if epsilon is equal to zero, it's known as the constant volume situation. Now, in other textbooks, like Levenspiel and Fogler textbooks uh, that, we, that I have on my references slide, instead of saying constant volume, they like to refer to the situation as constant density. So please don't get confused uh, when you're studying. If you see that it says constant density situation, they really mean the same thing. It's the constant volume situation, and epsilon is zero for both scenarios. Everyone OK with that? So for your exam, you just need to know constant volume. But in textbooks, it says constant density.